This video was brought to you by Stoinberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? This is the Citroen EC4, and in this video, we're gonna walk through the interior. So, uh, not much to see in the front. Uh, under here, we just have car stuff. Let's start with the back. So, the car has this uh, sloping shape here in the back. Seems to be aerodynamic. And uh, we have, uh, at least with this car, manual lift gate. And maybe I should check it with the laser can. So the depth of the trunk is ooh, 75 centimeters. The width here is one meter. And then, well, maybe I should take out this one. Yeah, many people also want to know how, how much space do you have if you take out this one, you put, uh, let's say, a dog cage. I think this is the distance you want to know. The diagonal distance is 79, uh, 79 centimeters and then how high is this one 62 centimeters what about loading height roughly let's say until here ish we have 69 centimeters hmm, not too high yeah I can see I can feel it here some cars they have really high entrance and then you can take out this one to free up more space or you can move this further down actually yeah, you can do something like this and then then actually yeah that also matters then you suddenly have 70 centimeters there looks to be fairly spacious trunk for car this class we take out this lid see without the lid looks like this we have space here for putting cables and stuff which is very practical or it could be impractical because you tend to put all the luggage on top of it and then you need to access the cables at least you have some pockets here on the side on the other side also but they are too small to put the cables in there and since there's no front then i guess the cables go here we have hooks here for securing cargo oh these are this seems to be nice and sturdy from metal all four corners here yeah that's good what is this ski opening hmm uh no 12 volt outlet though here and the length with the seat folded we have Oh, 166 centimeters. And what about diagonally, roughly like this? Uh, oh, oh, 180 centimeters. Hmm, yeah. And the charge port placement is perfect. On the left side, which is the right side. Some cars, they have it on the right side, which is the wrong side. But why do you want to have it back here, not in the front? If you have it in the front, you're going to get full of schmutz. If you have it, uh, like, near the front halfway uh, then you get uh, problems when you want to plug it in some places with short cable but if you are here just like in a tesla or ionic you drive here anyway you come out open this one very convenient rather than having one on the wrong side which is the right side yeah and there is no uh, cover for the type 2 n which i think is just perfect no need to cover that one we only need to unhook this one for DC charging okay let's check the seat width roughly uh, oh 130 no, 125 centimeters roughly yeah and then oh yeah, yeah you also want to check this one the height here roughly you see 30 ah 35 centimeters some cars tend to have flat seat oh yeah, yeah and I, I feel it now when i sit here that you can see on my legs that they are chubby no i mean <laughs> you see that if i sit something like this the legs points a little bit up upwards because the battery takes up space here uh, not the best uh, seating position in the back in my opinion you see there's a weird hump here where you usually want to put your feet under this front seat but I guess that could be part of the battery pack. That's why, but at least they freed up some space here. But the downside is there's this weird transmission hump in the middle here. So if you need to sit in the middle, let me try. You kind of have to ride the hump. <laughs> yeah, but okay, we have pocket here. Hmm, nice seat. Uh, here we have events for the back. And just the feel of the buttons here. Okay, maybe not the best, but then not the worst. It doesn't feel like when I do this on uh, an Audi or BMW. 
but at least we have what you see uh, Citroen they went for one USB-C and one USB-A yeah for comp compatibility okay let me see let me move over here again let me check this one that's do the knocking hmm interesting design door pocket there let me see what some people want to know is how far does this uh, window go oh fairly low okay it seems to be tinted from the factory also uh, no hooks there we have lights here okay oh, that's good uh, let me check the headroom space well this is okay I need to adjust the arm and neck I mean so, whatever else. the the headrest all three headrests are adjustable that's good oh when it comes to clearance though not the best let me try to sit more upright I tend to sit like 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 this you know too laid back try to sit more upright and your head will I mean your hair will rub into the roof so I'm still 173 centimeters there is not even a fist of clearance we just two finger of clearance that's it but um, I want to show you that we do have a, a I'm not sure if I should call it panorama roof or sudden roof it's just manual like this but then you can also open it but at least it uh, opens up and yeah, it gives some some nice fresh uh, light in here and then for sure we have center console here we just have to oh, I was actually looking for something normally cars they will have a little strap here you can open it but now you have to do it like this and this was the ski opening I was looking for so it does have a French opening here for skis hmm Do, uh, German cars Deutsche cars they tend to have really big ski opening but at least we have an opening here uh, we have a little uh, pocket here there is a pocket here we have a cup holder a little bit open though no uh, hold holding it or something nothing here but we have at least armrest let me test something I need to test the headroom in the middle seat it's about the same maybe slightly worse yeah because you see the seat um, it seems to be slightly taller on the middle versus the side but on the other hand it's not too much shaped just yeah, slightly shaped here you see so I guess uh, the center <laughs> seat is always the worst one the front seat looks like this again we have the same stripe there the design thing here we can adjust uh, like this yeah okay we just keep it like that uh, the interesting part here is that this one has a manual adjustment uh, forward and backwards but then you have electric adjustment here but with no memory <laughs> and here we also have some adjustment here I wonder I try to figure out what it is um, because there is no user manual in this car sorry <laughs> but this one here is massage except for that oh, okay I know I have to activate the car again you see that's also a feature I should show you that the car has been idling for a bit but then after about 50 minutes it goes into some kind of off state so then you have to press the brake and then you have to start engine <laughs> but you have to hold it down you can't just press it like this like most other cars you have to hold it down for two seconds and then you see the ready state yeah now we are in the ready state and then the head of display comes up but now I can show you that if you press this one you will get some massage in the seat it's nice massage it's like um, it's just like most cars they have this it's not it's just to relieve some pressure but unlike most other cars I tried like the Mercedes EQC and the ID3 ID4 they run the massage for about 15 minutes I think it was 15 minutes and then it turns it off in this one it runs it until you stop it maybe that's a French thing so it's uh, semi 
okay in here uh, not the most cramped car but also not the most spacious car but fairly good for this size for this class uh, you see it's like this I just manual there and just here and I have to check steering wheel goes up and down but also in and out very nice I like it and then I need to check also sun viruses it pivots oh, oh it's th this one though it's really hard to <coughs> take out <laughs> uh, it pivots but it does not extend this direction it just pivots that's it and then the mandatory no. oh you know this one is not hard plastic neither oh, this one is hard plastic this one is soft and this one is this <laughs> the some there must be some did stein element with this versus the, you know, also the same one that goes here with the seat so yeah okay and then here we have let me close the door here again there's some rubberized thing here oh i, I bumped into the yeah <laughs> some people commented about the sound okay oh the, the massage is on maybe i should switch it off yeah okay uh we have this type of head of display poor man's head-up display <laughs> we have some buttons here uh, four there's some kind of auto steer but I, mean, I think this car doesn't have the the full uh, full version of it so it's like ping pong we have here heated front windscreen heated steering wheel this is um, for uh, yeah, pre preheating pre-cooling here we can adjust the uh, I can show you here we can adjust the head-up display I think you can see it we adjust the brightness and we also adjust this position here but I haven't found a button to take uh, to disable it many cars they have a button we can just take it uh, retract it but not this one so steering wheel has physical buttons I like it you just have to get used to it uh, but it has a nice feel It has nice persistence and nice audible feedback when you press it. I like it. It gives me, oh, yeah. It gives me nice, nice, uh, just pleasant to use and also. To begin, say a command after the tone. The sounds are pleasant. And here also, we have, have to adjust it, sorry. See, we have light here in the back of the instrument cluster. That's nice. Um, we have some information here. Okay. Sorry. Navigation isn't active. Oh, okay, sorry. It's trying to do the voice command thing. But, um, and you can uh, use the buttons here, let me see, uh, to adjust the settings, uh, what you want to see. Oh, no, no, uh, to you To adjust stuff in here, there's a button here you have to know of. Board computer button and here. So you use the left one here to change between which, uh, which mode, I mean, which uh, panel you want. You can customize this in uh, the main screen. So for example, if I have it in the driving, you have some, but what I don't like is that it takes, uh, every time you switch the mode, it's just, it's just so slow. Why? Look at that. Yeah, okay. But you can, all, you can see very little things at once. Like, yeah, you see? Um, and uh, here we have the trip meter. I. Customize the trip. We have to go closer, you see. And then we have to use the left side here to change it. You see, we have different. Uh, this one, okay. And then uh, I guess you can reset this. Uh, okay, uh, <laughs> let me see. Uh, let, me, let me just do this. Hold it down. Reset it. But the funny thing is that, okay, in the early version of uh, the PSA cars, well, I think it's not PSA anymore. Uh, the the estimated range jumped up in 10 tenth of kilometers <laughs> precision until you were low then it showed more precise numbers that one has been changed after they also improved, improved the charging uh, curve but the distance here does not show fractions <laughs> and also a, a small nitpicking here you know i'm against this kind of unit this this fossil design unit where you have 22.7 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer who measure distance in 100 kilometer or who measure units in 100 kilometers it should be like tesla 
227, then you don't need the, the fraction. 227 watt hour per kilometer. You see, the, the, the kilowatt hour per hundred unit is so long that they even cut out the, the km, the kilometer part here. <laughs> you know what I mean? You feel me, bro? Huh? Okay. But anyway, okay, let's keep going. So um, this is also the infotainment system that you find in the other cars like the, the Peugeot uh, E28 or E2000. Uh, yeah, it's the same, same system. Uh, you have some menus. I, I find it a little bit uh, confusing. I use these cars. Uh, I tried the E28, the E2008, the DS3. They have the same, same system, like the same OS. But I'm always lost in the tango every time. You have some cogwheel there uh, for audio settings uh, and turn off screen. And there's some profile stuff. You have uh, options here. System options, okay. Um, but uh, you have some settings here. Uh, but then if you want to set, for example, other settings for HVAC uh, preheating, then you, you're trying to, okay, where, where is it? Is it here? No. Is it cogwheel here? No. No, you have to triple press, and then you have to go to climate. And then you have more options here. And here you have preconditioning. You see? So, the settings are spread all over the place. And here you also have the HVAC settings. That's also another confusing thing is that when you're usually, uh, let's say you're in navigation and you see the, the temperature and left and right, and you also, you can also adjust here. You can adjust individually. You see now it's not, uh, uh, it's not linked left and right. And then you try to figure out, well, how do I link left and right? Uh, well, you, how do you do it? Auto? No, it's not linked. No, and then you try the cogwheel, and you come back here. No, where's the setting? You click here again. No, climate setting. Go back, back. How do you link it? You have to go like this, climate, and then you have mono. Now you link left and right. You see how confusing it is? <laughs> there is potential to get to make this better. But okay, I'll just show you some of the infotainment system. So <laughs> the video shouldn't be only about that one. So here we have, again, just like in the back, we have one USB-C. This one has communication. This USB-A has only power. But they are fast. I measure them to, to charge fairly fast. We also have wireless charging pad here. You can take at least a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. Yeah, now it charges. That's also nice. We have indication here. There is no indication on the screen, but we don't need it. Um, under here, we have also a nice place for putting phone or something. And oops, sorry, uh, my phone fell down. What I like is that it has a little rubberized surface, so it doesn't slide all over the place. However, <laughs> one little weird, I mean, this design thing is that if you put the phone there at night, it reflects. You see the light there. It's, well, yeah, it reflects kind of in your face. And now again, you see, after 15 minutes of, of idling, the car goes into this resting state where HVAC turns off or heater in winter turns off. Um, so then you have to press the brake and then start engine again. There. <laughs> so that becomes a little bit cumbersome if you're just, I don't know, if you're a taxi driver or waiting for someone. But okay, let's keep going. At least we have 12 volt out in the front. Yeah. And look here, we have a little space under here also to put more items. I like these nice little pockets to put stuff in there. Um, here we also have a little pocket to put some stuff there. The gear selector here is interesting. First time I sat in here, I tried to press these buttons and I was like, huh? Wait, I want to I wanna go into... Uh, oh, you have to use this one. Now, we are in drive. Okay, that's reverse. That's neutral. And then, but then you have to press this one for park. And if you want to go in drive and then use B mode, you have to press here. So, uh, I guess it needs just, just something... You, you just get, have to get used to it. And then drive mode here is to select between... I can show here. Uh, you have, it will, every time you start the car, it will default to normal and then you can change, change it to eco. It will save, yeah, we will say here, it will save some performance and thermal uh, HVAC settings. 
And then you could also go into sport, but I don't really feel much different between sport and normal. Because um, I can also show you that. Um, let me see. Okay, I'm parked. I have to make sure that I'm parked. The pedal here, I'll show you here. Many cars is like this that you have, you press the pedal, but then there is an extra step there. Yeah, that extra. You, you think you press it and then. I think it's common on maybe French cars. So for many modes, you will still be able to access the full power, even an Eco, if you press it like this. But uh, since I don't see any kilowatt units in here, I'm not able to measure it properly. Okay, let's keep going. This one is... I actually wonder what it is. Yeah, I sorry, but I, I haven't tried... Oh, yeah. Okay. So it's actually just to enter this screen where you can see the, the energy flow or statistics here or when, uh, yeah, for charging settings. So yeah, at first I thought, hey, maybe it's to open the charge port. No, there's no, no button to open the charge port. Uh, this is just the, the handbrake. We have a cup holder here with a nice lid on it. Um, here we have a space for putting some more stuff and nothing in there except for that one. Um, the armrest here can actually extend forward. I like it. I think that, that that's a common feature in many cars, but I just haven't discovered it. And then I can show you here. This one again, I haven't figured out what the heck it is. I wonder if it is an iPad, I mean, like a, not iPad, tablet holder or something. But again, I try to, and also we have this tray here. Look, huh? La nice, huh? French design. And then again, just like the, the other PSA cars, this thing here, the, the glove box is freaking huge. It's deep. You can go really deep on it. But I tried to find the manual. I couldn't find the manual. <laughs> so that's why some stuff in here, I don't know how it works. But here, I like this also. Um, this is to adjust the airflow. It has that nice clicking sound. And it has a nice, um, nice uh, feel on it. So overall, I have to say that it feels nice and premium. Yeah. Okay, and I have to show you here. Uh, we have more buttons here. Uh, the lights here, it's like this. Uh, you turn on the lights, you, d you turn on this one. But if you want to turn on more lights, the reading lights, you have to turn them on individually. There's no button to turn on all the lights. Simultaneously, yeah, and here you can also open. Wait, there, there. You can also open the the glass roof. Not every car allows you to do that, but at least this one allows you to do it. Okay, let's pull it back, and then um, it shows that here we also have makeup light with, I mean, makeup mirror with light for the driver and also for the passenger but at least it's consistent that they use okay maybe a little bit coal led here but at least the the the, the color on the led in here is the same temperature as here some cars they have different temperature which kind of i don't know it, it's just me nitpicking and yeah sorry for that so uh, and then one last thing i should check is how about the headroom for the driver okay that one is better you see actually if you go for the glass roof you have plenty of headroom but however you might still rub into this side i'm just exaggerating so you can see the problem if you are much taller um and this one you just have to manually close it like this <laughs> yeah so hmm, let me see yeah and also what do i think about the seats i've been spending lots of time in the seat i did range test which was around 500 kilometers total and also did 1000 kilometer challenge so i've been sitting in the seat a lot and these seats they are nice and firm uh kind of reminds me of german seats german seats seems to be a little bit not a notch firmer than this uh, it doesn't have too much side support so it feels like almost like uh, american cars or uh, maybe like a mach e 
uh, but still comfortable, I have to say. Uh, I didn't feel like, ooh, I... To be honest, when I test um, German cars, like, uh, like the BMW iX3, or uh, when I test uh, the, uh, the, the ID3, for example, ID4, I f for me personally, I th after a while, I feel like uh, I get a little bit butt hurt. Yeah. <laughs> but this one gives me nice comfort and nice support without uh, being too soft or too hard. When it comes to Tesla seat, okay, now, Tesla seat, on the other hand, like the Model 3 seat, just as a reference, is even one notch softer. The same goes for, for example, the Leaf seat, the zero gravity seats. They're also very, very uh, comfortable. But these ones, also very good. So there you have it, the Citroen EC4. And which one do I prefer of the similar cars? You know, the one with the same battery and the same drivetrain. The E28, the Peugeot E28, is uh, smaller, but the ride is more compact, uh, more tight. This one is super comfy. It's a Citroen, after all. And what does? And fairly spacious. Also, size in the back and the trunk. Also, I feel like the center area here is not too cramped, like I mentioned. Some cars, they tend to cramp you in a little bit. For example, uh, uh, Polestar 2. Uh, this one, uh, not too bad. I don't remember exactly how it was because it's been a while since I tested the other uh, cars. But overall, I'm quite happy. I actually like this car a lot. And maybe it could be because the, the tires are yeah, 195, 60. 18 but i like these kind of tires it doesn't look too big and they give me nice comfort and also really good soundproofing so yeah i think that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later